guys! I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka and I welcome you to my channel. As always, I am so grateful that you guys are listening, subscribing and commenting. I appreciate the support. And of course, if you guys want to support me further, you can do that by going to my Patreon site. The link is in the description below. And you can give me a dollar a month, five dollars a month, whatever you guys prefer. In this video, I want to speak to you guys a little bit about skepticism and how even though INFJs have the capacity to believe some of the most randomest of things, you know, we can believe in the, in the possibility of there being um, non-linear time and uh, fairies or imaginary worlds, or imaginary people, uh, we can believe in the fact that my water bottle has a soul or is sentient or is animated or rocks have, you know, souls within them or things like that. We can believe in all of these random things that other people are, look at us like, I can't believe I should believe that. But then we have also this, I guess, protective mechanism perhaps, which is the skeptic in us. And the skeptic kind of comes out and rears its head suddenly and tells us, okay, what this person is talking about is absolute nonsense and you can't believe it. You, can, you can't possibly believe this nonsense, right? And so we have both of these contradictions within us and we do come across as a, a, a major contradiction in general, but these two things really make us seem like we're a little bit insane. I'll give you a quick example from my own life. The reason I'm doing this video is um, I went to a dinner a couple of nights ago and there was this individual there who was extremely into energy. And if you guys know anything about INFJs, we are energy fiends. We believe everything has energy, everything is energy, and uh, we all, always vibe with other people depending on their energy. And she was majorly into energy. She's a Reiki healer, and so she loves energy. She talks about energy all the time. Everything is energy to her, right? And so obviously when she started talking about that kind of stuff, I was like, yes, all right, awesome. I could talk about energy with this person forever and ever and ever. I love talking about energy and how it affects us and how it affects people around us and how we can um, gather more of it or how we can um, sense it in other different people or in the environment. And also she loves Chiang Mai and loves the energy here. So, you know, I felt like she was like a soul mate, like a, a soul friend. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm really excited to sit across from her and have a conversation about that. And so we did have a conversation about that for maybe 10 minutes and I was ecstatic and happy. And then she started talking about this negative energy that is in her apartment and she didn't say it like that. She didn't say there was a negative energy in her apartment. She said that she had a spirit, an evil spirit living in her apartment. Okay, and so until this point, I've been listening to her and really jiving with all of the stuff she's saying, really jiving with her energy and her thought processes and really loving her and imagining that we could be good friends in the future, things like that, right? And then she says this and all of a sudden, I mean, that skeptic in me, that, that person, that, that being that's inside of me that's like, I guess, protecting me somehow or just kind of making me stay grounded or stay in the real world as much as possible. She reared her head and she's like, all right, then that's it. That's that, that, that ends that. And so instantaneously, I started feeling a lot of skepticism for this person's words. And maybe she sensed it, maybe she didn't. But she kept on talking about it, about this evil spirit and how whenever she switches off the lights, he moves things in her apartment and then she, you know, she switches on the light again and he stops moving things. And, and so basically he's kind of like a poltergeist. And so I really tried as much as possible to stay open because I don't know all the different things that exist on this planet. I'm not a privy to everything. I am just a minuscule being that can't see everything. So if she says she has a poltergeist and she's a Reiki healer and she works with energy more so than I do, then it must be true and it has to be. I mean, she's not a crazy person and she is very smart from what I gathered. So if she's saying it, it must be true. And so I really had to sit down within myself for a few minutes and really try to convince myself to stay as open as possible with these individual, with this individual's conversation, right? And the good thing about her is that she didn't notice my discomfort or anything, which is, thank I'm so thankful for that. She just kept on talking about how this poltergeist was really affecting her and how she wanted to uh, exercise him or her or it and you know, bring someone in who could get rid of it because it was really annoying and scary, of course. And, you know, after a little bit of time, I could, 
I could listen to her without feeling a lot of anger or um, skepticism or just like disdain in general, disgust, dis- disdain, you know. I could listen to her and not be like, oh my God, you're full of shit, right? And I think that's what I wanted to transmit to you guys is that I do this very often, especially with people around me because I have this tendency to dismiss a lot of things people say as nonsense because for some reason I think that I know better than them. And I always think to myself, why do I know better than them? Yes, sometimes it's my intuition speaking and telling me that this person is full of shit. Good, that's fine. My intuition is speaking up. Great. But sometimes it's just a skeptic in me and this, this skeptic, I don't know necessarily how smart she is or he is or she it is or how much it knows, right? I think a lot of times if it hears something that's not jiving with normal state of affairs or things that we're all right or with, then it starts becoming skeptical and starts telling me not to listen anymore. And I really don't like that because for me, some of the things I believe, I'm sure other people listen to it and think, oh my God, she's full of crazy nonsensical talks, right? I'm sure my parents look at me and think, I can't believe you do all these weird things, right? And they do. I mean, I, when I started, first started meditating, they looked at me like I was crazy. And so there's always different layers and levels to people and to spirituality and to awakening and to this whole process of learning about this world that we live in. And perhaps this lady that I was sitting in front of at this dinner, she's at a completely different level in terms of energy and she's able to sense evil spirits more so than I can, right? So I don't know. I have no idea. I am not, I don't know everything about the world. I'm not God. And so, of course, there's so many things about the world that I'm not sure of. And if this person's saying that it's true for them and they believe in it so fervently that they can talk about it with a group of people that they just met. We were all strangers to her, except for one friend that she came with. And so she's able to talk about it without fear, or without, without, um, without any kind of compunction. She just, she just chatted about it as if it was normal. And so I imagine that she obviously believed it was true. And I had this desire in me to say, okay, Stop being so skeptical. You have no idea what the real world is all about. You spend all your time in your imaginary world in your head. A lot of random things happen in your head, in your imaginary world. So why can't it be real in this real world, right? And so that was a really good learning point for me and a turning point for me as well, because I really felt like I matured a little bit in that moment. And I wanted to share it with you because I imagine that you probably, as INFJs, go through this as well, where your skeptic kind of rears its head and says, no, this person's nonsense and he doesn't know or she doesn't know what she's talking about. So stop listening or, you know, walk away from this person. And I know some of it you're like, well, no, I can't listen to this anymore. I, I just have to leave. And that's okay. But if it's possible for you to silence your inner skeptic for a few seconds, a few minutes, and really try to open yourself up to this person's words and thoughts and processes, I think it would be I think it could be a very great learning process, not only because you'll feel yourself growing up as an individual and becoming an adult, adults have to do these kind of things, but also you might learn something new. And I mean, I did not think that I could ever imagine that, I mean, I do know or believe that there are obviously things that we don't see with, with our visible eye. There are things that are there, I mean, ghosts and spirits and things like that. But I never imagined that, you know, I'd hear someone talking about it so openly and so uh, excitedly, right? And so it really did, for me, open myself up to a new world. And I'm sure if I ever meet this lady again, I will absolutely ask her more questions about it and have more conversations about it with her because I want to learn more. I want to know how she looks at the world and how does she view the spirit world and, you know, is are they all evil according to her? And you just want to learn about things from a person who, this, who sees the world in a different manner. Okay. And so I think that's what I want to convey to you guys as well is that it's it's important for us to silence our inner critics at some points in time and stop being so skeptical about people and their things and then just open ourselves up and listen to it, even if we don't believe in it completely. I still have a hard time believing in poltergeists, but I haven't completely dismissed it and I haven't completely dismissed her, which I think is a great stepping stone to maybe learning more about the world in general. And, and learning more about the world in general from people who see things differently, right? I mean, I look at the world in one way and then other people look at the world in different ways. And the way that we can, I think, really hone our skills and learn about the world completely and wholly is by allowing other people's opinions and ways of looking at things 
to inculcate and into uh, integrate with yourself, right? That's the only way I think you could really learn more about the world because we have a very narrow view. Everyone has a very narrow view of looking at the world, their own perspective. And so you really need to open yourself up in order to bring in other people's perspective and learn about the world in different manners. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I know it's, it's something that you're probably thinking is a little bit crazy and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can do it, but I think with practice, anything is possible. So I hope that you will try this out at least once or twice in your lifetime. Uh, open yourself up and be less skeptical and don't believe that your viewpoint or your way of looking at the world is the only way to look at the world. If you guys like this video or if you like any other videos, you're more than welcome to support me on Patreon. My site description or link is in the description below and I shall see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.